This way we'll hopefully have a clean recording of it. All right, so we're going to get down to business. We're going to do some definitions first uh, when we talk about transformations. And we really haven't referred to them in this way, but you have done them. Have faith that you have done them. Uh, you probably did them in elementary school. They were slides and reflections, flips, slides, and stretches. No? Nobody did those in elementary school? Just me? Okay. Um, a transformation... I can zoom in. Let me zoom in. Let me focus that for you. Is any change to the shape, the shapes, I guess that should be shapes, dimensions, or location in relation to the original and sometimes we call that the original, or we call it a parent figure. So many slashes here. It really depends on what we're doing. And I'll explain that. So actually, we do these a lot in essentials math, and I always skip them because we do them very visually. Nice thing about pre-cal makes me feel better. We're back to that algebra, which makes me feel better. Anytime it's visual, I suck at that. So all we're doing is we're talking about a transformation is kind of like the general name to any time we do something to change the shape. So that's like the general name of all the things together. Uh, you guys, you probably see it online. Uh, transformation, somebody's beauty transformation, right? Like they've changed their hair, they've changed the style of their clothes, they've done something. Um, so transformation is anything that we do to change the shape or the location of the object. So just really, really quickly, um, if I have a coordinate plane here, okay, and let's say I have a square, a two by two square. Oh, you guys can't see that. Uh, so there's my two by two square. Don't feel like you got to draw this. I'm just trying to, so a transformation would be, well, let's say I stretch that by a factor of two. Okay, so I'm going to stretch it by a factor of two. So if I stretch it by a factor of two vertically, the height is going to double. What we just did there was a transformation. It was a specific transformation. It was a vertical stretch. But the general category, we transform the look of that object. We can also transform the location of that object. We could say, okay, let's go back to the original object. We want to move it two units to the left and one unit down. Ooh, so there's two to the left, but I got to go one down. So there is my transformation. Again, it's a very specific thing. Like we've gone to the left. I went right, didn't I? I keep saying left, but I went right. Yeah, okay, so we're going to go to the right and one down. Um, and that's the new location. So what we did was we transformed this being the parent or the original, and we would label this one P1. All right, so that we've transformed it. We know that it's related to that one. So that's all that is. Like the general transformations are just those. Okay, mapping. Probably never, well, you've probably heard the word. Um, so mapping is the description. Okay, so mapping is just, you're telling me what we did. I went two units right and one unit down, that's mapping. I vertically stretched by a factor of two, that's mapping, right? So you're telling me what the transformation is that you've done. All right, so mapping notation is putting it in a mathy way. Okay, so mapping notation is I like it because it's like straightforward. You know when we were doing like 
vertex form and parabolas and like the x always did something different like if it was a negative then it was a positive when we graphed it like the nice thing about mapping is the math is the math it's straightforward it's it's good so xy represents the parent okay and then we draw this fancy arrow doesn't have to be that big. I realized I got a little crazy with my length of my arrow. Um, so the parent function, wh what do we want to do? I moved, let's say I, we went two units right and one down. That's what we did in that drawing that I just did. So now we're going to do it mathematically. Okay. So what did we do to the x's? We didn't, we didn't. So we added to, we did you're on the vertical stretch. So we would say for the x values, we add two to move them two places to the right. And then if we go down, we know that affects the range or the y value. So that's going to be y minus one. So you're telling me mathematically what I do to each coordinate. Okay? It's nice and easy. Um, so here's the language of the mathing. 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 And here's the mapping rule, okay? That's the mapping, sometimes it's called mapping notation, sometimes it's called a mapping rule. It depends on, like if we're doing it from the textbook, sometimes in the provincial exam it will have different, they mean the same thing. It's looking for this. It's looking for the math that you do. Okay, translations is a specific transformation. Can you guys see this? These are my markers and I feel like they're not like super rich in color. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay. All right. So translation, this is a specific transformation. Remember like transformations is everything. Translations are, are considered slides. Um, so these are going to be change the location, not the shape. So with slides, we can go left, right. And we can go up, down. That is not a multiply sign. That's just uh, me trying to decide how I want it to define it. So when we talk about a translation, it's literally, we call it a slide because we take the shape and we slide it left or right and we slide it up and down. So the shape itself doesn't change the way it looks. It just changes its position on the graph. Really easy. These are the easiest ones to do. And so translations, we call those shifts. So a vertical shift, sorry guys, I've zoomed in too much. A vertical shift is going to be your up down and they affect the Y values or the range, whatever you want to call it. So horizontal is this way. So that's going to be your left to right. Those of you at home cannot see me making all these hand gestures. And your mapping rule um, that we just did in the example there shows that horizontal and vertical shift. So we're going to use that language. We're not going to call them up downs well we will because that's the plain language but the mathy language that goes behind it is a vertical shift up and down a horizontal shift will be left and right um, we're going to do vertical stretches that's going to change the look of it but that's tomorrow that's tomorrow we're going to do those tomorrow all right everybody good with that i can flip the page um okay here's the thing we can sketch the graph once we know what the parent function looks like. 
you have to know the original in order to be able to do any of these shifts, right? Like if you don't know what the parent is, you can't just graph this um, in isolation of something else. All right. Okay, so you guys have seen this before. This is your most beautiful graph. This is your most beautiful parabola. That's your basic one. That's the one that has the vertex at zero, zero. It has a nice normal width. I can do my pattern. It looks like that. Now, the reason why I wanted to use function notation is some people get a little, little crazy, a little, little upset uh, with function notation. Um, sorry, guys. You didn't. Booklet is like page one, so it doesn't lay flat. It like keeps flipping on me. So here's the thing, is we can do a couple of things. We know the equation of this. So what is this telling us to do? What does that plus three mean? Is it affecting my x's or is it affecting my y's? Y value. I'm pointing at the screen, it's the y value. Okay, so this is going to be three units. And the reason, okay, so this is how we're going to know this. So we know our table of values for our original function. Uh, let's just do some. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Uh, so this will be 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. Right? That's our basic one. You guys all know this parabola. You've lived, slept, breathed, eaten this all through grade 11. So if we do this one, again, our x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. When we put them into here, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 3 now is 7. So we've shifted our y's up 3 units. Exactly. So this one will be 4, 3, 4, 7. And we know that we can trust our math because parabolas are symmetrical. So they sh I don't always have to do the calculations. Okay, so here's where the trick comes. Is that this is really nice because it gives you the equation and we're just adding 3 to it. It indicates that it's up. Sometimes, though, you don't get the equation. So this is where no equation is given. I'm going to do this to you. I'm going to show you a pretty picture and I'm not going to give you the equation, okay? What does f of x mean? What's that variable that gets replaced by that? Y. y, right? So f of x usually represents or does represent the y values. So when we come down to here, what are we doing? We're going y plus 3. So you don't need the function per se, but you might need the picture. If you don't have the equation, you need the picture. If you don't have the picture, you need the equation. You need one of those two things in order to do this. So right here, f of x plus 3, it's really we're taking the y's and we added 3 to it. We did the exact same thing when we knew the equation. Uh, I'm beating you up on this or I'm taking a long time to explain something very simple because this is one of those things that um, we, don't always, we don't always get. All right, okay, which way is this going? Is it going left or is it going right? Think back to grade 11. This isn't a mapping rule. The mapping rule always tells us this is straight up math. If you were to graph this function, which way am I going? Where does my vertex live? We're going right. So this is right three units. Now notice I keep putting units in there. You have to. You have to. So this is not a mapping rule. Not So really, it's an equation. So you know from grade 11 that this is painful when it's with the x, it always does the opposite to what it should. And again, we can use our table of values to prove it. I will tell you this in, in grade 9, I will tell you this in grade 10, I'll tell you this in grade 11, and I will tell you this in 12, and I will tell you this in calculus. 
a table of values will never lead you wrong. Okay? Table of values never lead you wrong. So if we do our negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, if we do those and we substitute those in, negative 2 minus 3 squared. Um, negative 1 minus 3 squared, 16. Uh, 0, so that's going to be 9. Put a 1 in there, that's going to be 4. Put a 2 in there, that's going to be 1. Do you guys see the vertex yet? Do you guys see the vertex yet? No, no we don't see the vertex yet because the... Like the values haven't repeated themselves, right? So we haven't seen the vertex yet. So let's keep going. If I put 3 in there, what do I get? Hopefully you get 0. If I put 4 in there, 1. And then if I put 5 in there, so now you see the flip of the values, right? So this is going to be 4. So right there is my vertex. This was my, oh, I circled it on the upper one. This is my original vertex was at 0, 0. My new vertex has shifted 3 to the right at 3, 0. Okay? I know you're super excited. And these numbers, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have circled the 9. These numbers are exactly the same for y values in the chart. So we haven't stretched it or anything. We've just shifted it. Um, table values never lead you wrong. All right, so let's go back to grade 11. Walk back into the door of grade 11. You're like, no, I don't want to do that again. Um, but I'm going to force you to do it. Okay, there's my purple. Okay, so my original function is, and see on my printout is they're beautiful. Um, they're all colored and everything. So your original function is the one with the vertex at 0, 0. So the original function, and it's the blue function, but you can't see that it's blue. Um, this is my original function. So this is the parent function or the original. You can call it either. Uh, just know that they mean the same thing. Parent is where children come from. Um, original, then you'll have your transformed one. Okay, so explain the shifts. So let's label these. Let's label this... Um, f of x1, and let's label this one f of x2, so that's that one, and then this one is f of x3. Um, crazy lady's going to highlight them just so I can see them. I'm getting older. Um, do I have any other colored highlighters? Jeez, Louise, probably not. Um, this one is red. I don't know if you can see that. So F2 is red. And what do I got? What do I got? Purple. Purple is that one. Okay, let's talk about them. So what's happening with my green function? My f of x1. Let's put it in words first because it says explain the shifts of the graph. So the word explain means to use words. For the left, so four units left. Anything else happen with that one? Or is it just four to the left? Just for the left, I like it. Uh, f of x two, my red one. Three units. So three units up. All right. Now let's talk about my third graph there. And remember, we're referring to it against the original function where three the vertex has shifted three units up if we didn't know what that parent function was we couldn't talk about it in relation to it's all about being related to that parent function so f of x3 
So four units down and two units right. So you don't have to write sentences for these when it says explain. Like we're still mathematicians here, folks. I'm not looking for essays. Um, what I want is clear, concise, you've described it using words, okay? Um, yeah, so that's it, that's really it. The shifts are the nice easy ones. The slides are the nice easy ones. Who? Oh, did we not determine the formulas? Oh, what am I supposed to? It says explain the shifts of the graph of the blue function if is the parent function. We explain them. Do you, I mean, we could. You crazy kid. You're like, yeah, I just came off grade 11. I can do this. <laughs> mapping notation? Nope. It will tell you if it wants mapping notation. It said explain, so we're going to use words. <sighs> All right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So we're going to do it twice. So this is... Oh, sorry, that was a bad, bad square. This is my parent function. This is my parent function. Um, again, I didn't show you the picture, so you need to have the equation. Okay? And now it's given to you, we're going to graph 1, the parent function, and then we're going to graph... Notice that the function wasn't given, but what are we doing to it? We're adding it... To so you could write it out as f of x equals negative x plus 3. Ooh, there should be a squared on there. Because that's what f of x is. And then add 2. Right? If you wanted to write it out. And then you would simplify that to 5. Does that make sense? Because this is f of x. Okay? But let's, let's slow my roll and let's graph the parent function. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can, um, I can graph it using a pattern. I'm just showing off at this point. If you like, if you're not comfortable with that, I would suggest using a table of values. Do you guys know where the vertex is just looking at this equation? It's definitely going down. This is telling me, so this is our remembering of grade 11. Some of you are going to remember better. So that's telling me it's going down. Is there anything added or subtracted to the vertex? Or to the x value, sorry. Um, yeah, that's, sorry, I said it wrong. You answered my question, right, Emily? But, um, or Angeli, sorry. Uh, just ruined your name there, too. Is there anything added or subtracted to the x value? Like, with, with the x, is there anything attached to it? No. Is there anything with the x? Nothing. Zero. Zero. Nothing's added or subtracted to it. There's a negative, and so I'm asking a very specific question, and maybe I'm not asking it in the right way. So y equals negative x plus zero squared plus three. If I write it like that, can you, do you know where the vertex is? Yes, zero. Right? So that's what I was trying to get across. I, I apologize uh, if I didn't ask it in the right way. So the vertex is at zero, three, which is nice if you're going to do a table of values. So if I'm doing the parent function, and the reason why knowing where the vertex is is important is because when I create a table of values, I know my vertex is at 0, 3. I always put that in the middle of the table, and I pick values on the left-hand side of it and on the right-hand side of it. And that way I know I'm getting a good um, spread. So negative 1, negative 2, 1, and 2. And so I'm going to substitute that in. Okay, so mathematically speaking, let's go back up to the vertex form. It's negative 2 squared, which is a positive 4, then times by that negative on the outside. So negative 4 plus 3. Negative 1. Oh, sorry, I did negative 2, so that's negative 1 up there. Um, if I substitute negative 1 in there, this is going to be 2. Plus 1. Uh, 
and then this one, if I've done my math correctly, this should be 2 and this should be 1. Sorry guys, you can't see that table. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and Should it be negative 2? Shouldn't like, it be negative 1 in the line? Okay, so let's go back here. Are we talking about this one? Yeah. Okay. So, yes, you're right. I did have a negative 1, and then I questioned it. And so this would be a negative 1. Is my 2 good? Yeah. yeah. But no, it's not. Negative 1. Oh, yeah, okay, it's good. It's good. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking my math for me. Um, I'm going ahead and dropping on... Um, my increments on my graph and I'm doing every second one. So there's a question whether or not you have to label all of them. I think we had this question like recently last semester um, and no you don't. You can go like 5, 5, negative 5, negative 5, that's fine. But what I said to my grade 11s is, is sometimes when I don't label all my increments um, I skip one or I misstep and I graph it incorrectly just because they're not the numbers aren't beside them. So I don't know that stresses me out a little bit. Uh, so zero and three is right there, and then negative one and two, and then I have two and negative one. See, I'm so much better graphing from the pattern. All right, so this is my f of x graph. That's my parent graph. Everybody got it? It's beautiful. Welcome back to grade 11. Um, okay, so now we're going to do part B, which says what? What are we doing? Plus 2 to the y. Plus 2 to the y. So you can do one of two things. You can go back to your table of values. You can do this equation, and you can calculate them all just like I did and I was super unsuccessful with that. So in part B, I'm going to look at my table of values since you guys helped me correct my table of values and I very much appreciate that. Um, what am I doing to the y? I'm adding 2. So I'm going to say, oh, negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Uh, ne uh, positive 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 3, 1. Okay, there we go. Now, if I substitute all these values into the equation, I should get those exact same answers. And some of you are brilliant and can see it graphically and don't need the table of values. You're going to say, okay, this y value is at 3, I'm going to add 2 to it. I'm right there. This y value is at 2, I'm going to add 2 to it. This y value is at 2, I'm going to add 2 to it. This one's at negative 1, I'm going to add 2. So notice that the width of my graph isn't changing. If I slid my red graph down, that would be right on top of my purple graph. So this graph is f of x plus 2. I swear I have a green one. Where it went, I don't know. I think this green's going to be too light. All right, so my last one. Let's talk about this. Remember, it's not a mapping rule. So what's happening? So this is telling me I'm going one unit to the right. So the mapping rule would be x, y, and that would go to x plus 1, y. Right? So in, if I were to do a table of values for c, my y values don't change. My y values don't change. The y is the y. So that's going to be a negative 1, a 2, a 3, a 2, and a negative 1. But what's happening is I'm adding one unit to the right on my x's. So this is going to be negative 1. This is going to be 0. This is going to be 1. This is going to be 2. And that's going to be 3. 
right? So I'm going back to that original function. So if you do the parent function table of values, it can be super helpful for you um, when you're graphing these things. Explain the who? C? Okay, so remember that that's not given as a mapping rule. So it's always doing the opposite. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to flip my page for a second. Remember back here? So in the equation, we put it there. And really what we're doing is we're taking 3 away from the x's, right? In the formula. So when it's given in the function notation, it's like it's in the formula, so it's doing the opposite to what we think it's going to be. Okay? This isn't the mapping rule. The mapping rule I wrote underneath it because Xander said, hey, it's doing the opposite. So if it's subtract one, that's really meaning I'm moving one to the right. And so the mapping rule would be I add one to my x's because right means plus one. So all I did was take my table of values, keep my y's because nothing changed in the y's here, and I added one to each one of my x's. And now I'm going to try to graph this in green. Uh, zero and two. Oh, can you guys see? Oh, you guys can't even see it. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad. It looks yellow, but we'll go with it. Uh, negative one, negative one, and zero and two, and then we got one and three, which means I have two and two. Three. Oh, this is terrible. I don't know. Oh, it looks really good on the screen, and it looks terrible to my eyes. So this one is f of Okay, that looks way better for you guys, and it looks like looks offensive on mine. Can you guys see it okay here? It looks better on my computer screen. Is it too light up there? Sunny, it's minus 800 outside. Yeah, that's why it's sunny. <laughs> hey, when it gets cold, it can only get warmer from here. So. True story, true story. <laughs> true. So this is the function notation. So function notation is going to function like we did with our parabolas. The mapping rule tells us like straight up what the math is. Um, that's why I like the ma mapping rule. So we think, ladies and gentlemen, that takes us to our first assignment. Um, the answer keys to the assignment are on the back. Like I put the answer keys for every assignment at the end of that lesson. So you can check. Yep. For just number one, the number one keys. Oh, sorry, my ah, oh, boo earns. This is F. Yeah, exactly. You're doing a system already. Uh, that's, sorry, it just got pushed over. That's F. That one's F. Sorry, guys, that was a good catch, Xander. All right, so I just want to show you, like, this graph here. Like, obviously, you haven't been given the function of this. There's nothing that would be an equation that would result in high peaks, lows, moves. So that's the parent function right there. And I've given you the function notation on how to move that. Okay, so what's this one? How would we move this one? So we're going two left and three down. So the mapping rule, you guys don't have to write the mapping rule, but it would be x minus two, oh, boo earns, that was supposed to be a comma, and y minus three. And then we would take the coordinates of each one of these points and pick points that are nice and obvious, right? Um, take the coordinates of those points and move those accordingly, right? So if this point is, oh geez Louise, that's a five, so this would be negative six and zero. This point would move to, so it's going to go two to the left and three down. So that's going to be at negative 8, negative 3. So that point translates to there. 
Does that make sense? And then you translate this point, and then you connect the dots. That's how I do it. Um, I'm really bad at visualization, like so it helps me to make sure my points are labeled. Some of you will be like, oh, over two, there we go, and we're going down three, so there's my second point. Some of you will be able to see it. You guys are much more um, spatial learners than I am, which is awesome. So just that's an example of where you're not getting the equation, you're just getting the picture, which is sometimes I think easier. And the questions on the provincial exam are very like picture oriented when it's specific to just a translation question. Just a, just a thought. Okay, I'm leaving you with that. I'm gonna stop my video.